So we've had two solid episodes of peace and character building, and this is where things go off the deep end. Lord Tywin of the Westerlands has risen up against King Robert of the Iron Throne in the War of Revenge. This is where it all goes to shit a little bit, isn't it? So Robert Baratheon found out that, unsurprisingly, could you believe it, Cersei Lannister and her twin brother Jaime Lannister were in a relationship. They both have incestuous and fornicator, which means, oh, of course, it must be the case, right? And as a result, he has had her executed. Tywin in response has declared a war that's going to cause a lot of death. I don't think Tywin probably stands a chance because this was a, a legitimate just execution, right? He did what uh, Robert Baratheon did what he could within the bounds of the law. Now, a lot of people are saying that it seems very silly that Tywin would do this because he's he's going into a losing war, right? But I, I, I think what choice did he have? Because Jamie, if, if, if this is true... J his his heir and successor Jamie, who is no longer part of the Kingsguard, is uh, uh has to be viewed as that incestuous fornicator as well. Tywin's doing this not just to defend his house and defend his honor, but it's also the only way that he's going to end up with with an heir, right? Other than Tyrion, and he hates Tyrion. I don't think it's actually too out of character. If he does nothing, he's admitting that his children were terrible, horrible, disgusting deviants, and that's going to be a stain on their house forever. And then when Jamie takes over, it's all going to fall apart, isn't it? it? It doesn't make a huge amount of sense, but I can see it. I can see it. So, of course, us being the honorable, trusting, uh, just Eddard Stark, just to a fault. Of course, we're going to follow Robert Baratheon. Not only that, of course, we're best friends. So the rebels will pay dearly for this. You've joined the War of Revenge. What a great name, huh? Currently, it is, good God, everyone, <laughs> everyone versus Tywin. The Riverlands, the Reach, and Dawn have not yet decided on on sides, which is interesting. I can't imagine. I mean, the Riverlands are probably going to join us because we're in the war, and obviously we've got um, alliances, familial ties. Why the Reach would join the Westerlands, I, I don't really know. And Dawn historically, I hate Tywin after the whole Elia Martell thing. I think Tywin's done for, but this is a very interesting war nonetheless. Let's see what happens here. And and Renly's in. John Arryn, the second of the Vale, is in as well. Weird. Are the others not going to join us? Man, I love Bobby B's armor. Very book accurate. Look at that. That's awesome. And he's got his big old Warhammer too. I presume that is uh, actually his uh, his Warhammer then. Yeah, there it is. Robert's Warhammer. He's got his crown. He's got his very fancy armor there too. Robert's armor. That's cool. I should have a look at some of the... um. I'll keep an eye on, on, on some of the treasuries a bit more, because there's clearly a lot of very, very unique stuff. It's very different to CK2, right? Because you can actually see them in their, in their full glory in this one. We would raise troops. We could do nothing, and this war would go perfectly fine for Robert. But as good, just Eddard Stark, we're going to get involved. We're going to go and help out. We're going to do exactly what we can. We're going to march from Winterfell, against my better judgment, down south. Here's the other thing. A lot of people have been suggesting mods over the course of the past few episodes. Things to throw in. The um, Cities of Wonder Game of Thrones mod, which adds uh, like a bunch of extra buildings and things like that to the world. Uh, like physical 3D models of the buildings to the world, which we're going to... Uh, oh, if we spot them, I'll point them out. Um, this Coronation mod I thought was quite cool because then they get given nicknames and stuff like that too. Um, obviously a little bit late for him to be to be crowned, but hey, that's pretty fun. Receives a nickname based on his personality. I think that's kind of a nice idea. King Robert the Usurper. Ooh, very appropriate nickname for him, given that that's what he screams at Ned about, right? Back in the, uh, back in the, uh, back in the books, back in the real timeline, huh? Let's get to work. Anyway, let's not piss around too much. I've added some other mods too. Uh, mods that say do little things like change the holding graphics depending on where we are. So this one gives like custom graphics to Winterfell, King's Landing, stuff like that. I believe it's all taken from a card game, from a fantasy flight card game. Now, anyway, sorry, more importantly, you might remember last episode, um, Eddard went on a big adventure. He, he was going on a hunt and then on the way back met this kid that was supposedly raised by wolves. And of course, him being a Stark, we've taken this kid into a household and then eventually he was straight up um, adopted and became the primary heir. I was trying to set us up for Jon Snow, but the game had other ideas, and I'm going to let it cook, because this is quite a cool outcome. So now we have Lord Marin Stark, the son of wolves. Not a blood relation at all, but it's good enough. It's good enough as far as I'm concerned. I think it's far more interesting this way. To be fair, Jon Snow's not Ned's son either, so that's how these things go. My son Marin has been asking me for a wooden warrior for some time. Um, 
Do we want to keep him content or shall we try and give him fickle? Um, no, I don't think Ned Stark would be like, yeah, be content with what you've got. That doesn't seem right. So we will give him fickle. I don't even remember if content is good in this game. I'm thinking with a CK2 mindset of content is not ideal. It's not terrible, but it's not ideal. A number of hoopos have been spotted hanging around near my residences of late. With their distinctive colorful crown of feathers, there's no mistaking what kind of birds they are. Traditionally, these birds have a number of positive associations in Northman superstition. They're believed to be symbols of wisdom and kingship. It's a sign of my good leadership, I suppose. Oh, well, there you are. Blessed by the hoopo birds for five years. Um, are we? Plus one diplomacy. 0.2 piety, 0.2 prestige. Or we can use them to make medicine. What does that do for us? Medium health boost. I don't think we need it. Ed Ned Stark doesn't type me, strike me as the type of guy to grind up a rare bird into tasty, delicious medicine. What's Roose Bolton doing? Why have you got troops raised there? Attacking Lord Roderick of Flint's Finger. Vassals can declare war freely. We should have had a look at Crown Lords and stuff like that. But it's been a little bit late now, isn't it? Right, let's get marching. Your liege won their war with Lord Giles. Good God, I was going to say we haven't even set off yet. So I guess we'll come down through um, Sea Guard here. This is Sea Guard, right? I'm not going mad. Yeah, down through Sea Guard. Come round up towards the top of the Westlands. It's actually faster to get on a ship at Flint's Finger. Shit, I suppose it probably is, given that Moat Kale and all this area down at the neck is all swamplands, isn't it? All right, what's the Embark cost is probably a better question, because I was saving up for a tournament. If it's particularly expensive, we'll walk. <laughs> Does it cost? Am I going mad? You will pay Embark fees, 111 gold. Nah, you're good. No, you're good. We'll walk. Thank you. Thank you for the offer, but I think we'll walk. Oh, my God. It's quicker to actually get on a ship to come to our own... Really? Is it that treacherous to pass through down here? I mean, I'm going to. Cross at the Twins, I suppose. Yeah, there you go. Promising prospects. Marriage exceptions for your close family. This is actually a great suggestion in the comments. Someone was like, hey, you should try and marry Jon Snow off to, uh, um, you know, one of the higher houses. Because it's unlikely at this point he's going to be on the throne now that we've got... Now that we've got Marin, this weird kid that suddenly popped up out of nowhere. I like it. I really do. It, it's not what I planned, but it's quite a quite a fun idea. My son, John, came complaining to me about Lady Hera bullying him. He's been hide, hiding all over the castle to avoid facing the child. Um, do not seek out trouble when it's unnecessary. That does sound like Ned's advice. Become a craven, though. Ooh, I don't like that. Craven or lazy for Jon Snow. Oh, God. Craven little John. Oh, I hate that. Lazy John is also terrible. Oh, God. This is awful. Uh, honestly, uh, out of both of these things that Ned Stark would say, do not seek out trouble when unnecessary, is it? It becoming Craven is an unfortunate side effect of playing the character. Lord Siegfried, are these Iron Islanders? They are. They're from Harlaw. How dare you? Well, I presume that's Harlaw, right? Yes, they are. How dare you, you big bitches. I mean, we can't do anything about it. It's because the realm is at war, right? So, Iron Islands... They haven't gone in... Maybe they've actually gone straight up independent. Because you can, in the middle of a war, declare... Oh, one of those options we had, of course, I was always going to pick loyalty. One of the options we could have gone for was... Ah! Well, that was easy. Um, <laughs> one of the options was... Try and attempt freedom. So we'll take a look and see what's happened there. In theory, those raiders have been totally shut down by us going back to peace. They're already back anyway, so it doesn't matter. Well, there we are. We won the war led by King Robert against Lord Tywin. Crimes committed by King Robert were not avenged. Lord Tywin will pay war reparations. It was 350 prestige. And King Robert can now imprison Tywin. Tywin also had to give him 1,700 gold. Jesus. We gained uh, probably nothing from that one because we didn't contribute. Oh, no, we contributed. 34%, so we got 51 prestige out of it. Hey, not bad. To say all we did was march south, then we'll just say return home. So what about the Iron Islands, then? Are we... They are still under the Iron Throne. They just had a brief window there that they were able to raid us, which is a little bullshit. Hello, we can we can petition Robert. That's so weird to see him sat on the Iron Throne. In the show, they never showed him on the Iron Throne. Damn. It just doesn't look right. It looks totally out uh, totally out of character i mean it is out of character for him to be sat on the throne i think that's kind of the point yeah i'm not gonna do that we could petition him and get what we want from him because we're best friends but it's not the type of thing ned Stark would do damn okay so i'm curious now whether or not he will just straight up execute tywin what the, like jamie lannister takes the westerlands where's he going oh he's going to king's landing he's gonna petition him what do you think uh greetings my amy uh, amicable liege hello it's lord john umber he's here 
asking us to go visit his people to help bring a bit of peace. And of course he will, because it's our duty to do so. What's Tywin up to, though? He's traveling to King's Landing. Is he going to be executed? What's he there for? I wonder if he's there to petition him. Tyrion's his regent. That is interesting. Messy. Messy situation. Okay. God, I wish I could see what was going on over there. Um, who is this? Lord Veon of Coldstream. Veon Pool. Whoever you are, fine. Show him in at once. And then thank you for your... Oh, generous gifts. My God, thank you. Someone pointed out in the comments as well. We don't necessarily have to put on the... For the Grand Tournament, which I would like to do very, very soon. We don't have to give the best rewards. So, speaking of important, it was uh, 600 and... What? 70 something? Oh... The men of the Night's Watch take a sacred vow to live and die at their post. A deserter must find justice at the hands of the Lord who captured him. Someone has fled from the Night's Watch. Ooh, is this a story thing or is this just incidental? A deserter by the man of Gedry is bought for me. He whimpers about things he saw north of the wall. Unspeakable horrors in the frozen wastes. It is a story element. That's cool. So he has fled from the Night's Watch, and he claims that there's spooky things up there. But of course, he has to receive justice for it. We have to, we have to lop his head off. Instead of the North, the man who passes the sentence should swing the sword. I look into Gedry's eyes for the last time. I shall swing the sword. For Pow. Presume he's dead then. My son, Marim, seems to enjoy the latest feast immensely. He got on quite well with all the guests. Great. Never hurts to make friends. Keeps Gregarious. Oh, Gregarious is good. Uh, notice how true value lies in the expensive trappings of power. Gains greedy. Ned Stark would never want that. I saw he looked at that servant, Maram. No, it never hurts to make friends. Yeah, gregarious. A gregarious paragon. Wow, what a guy. What a guy. Okay, I'm going to mark this as not special interest because I'm never going to petition Bobby B with our current character at the very least. I guess what we could do... Uh, what are the downsides here to... No, no regions. What are the downsides to uh, declaring... John's parentage at this stage, huh? I mean, he would still be hunted by Robert Baratheon, but if anything happens to Robert Baratheon uh, and we reveal his true parentage, what would happen then? Just so the world would know? I just don't think Ned would do it. It's, it's a troublemaker thing to do. Catelyn is pregnant again. Okay, another backup for the family. She's got to be so pissed that her kids are second in line between this uh, between this bastard born during a war and then a random kid that we found on the way out. Again, very weird. Do I regret taking this kid as... Ah, um, kind of. Like, a little bit. It was just too perfect a story element to ignore, but it does overshadow Jon Snow and ruin the entire pun about this series, but never mind. I accept your generous... Oh, Lord Brandon, thank you. Who are you? Brandon, Brandon Norrie. Thank you, I appreciate that. A little gold to go to my tournament. We can almost afford it again after that bloody war bankrupted us. We have... Dangerous Faction. Okay, potentially Civil War then. We need to have a look at that. I should be paying more attention to the larger realm, but want to kind of get into the character a bit more. Um, 80 gold. Oh! <sighs> Thank you for seeing me, my liege. I've come to you today with an urgent request. My land stand between the north and your enemies. Lordship of Whole Water is one of the marches of the realm, and in my defense... Oh, God. Okay, um... If, you, if I do this, you must heed my call. Uh, uh, we've got to do it, haven't we? It's what uh, Ned Stark would do. Okay, okay. We're going to do it. We'll throw the tournament. Let's deal with this first. What's going on here? What's going on here? Let's have a look. Um, Peasant Rabble wants lower county control. And then we've got Liberty Faction wants lower crown authority. And Skagos. Okay, so it's all the Skagossi. They're a slightly different culture, so I guess that does make some sense. That That's probably nothing we would ever have to worry about. Oh, it's in respect. Spouse opinion plus 50. Skills from spouse or vizier counselor tasks up by 25%. That's amazing. Peacemaker is, is really good as well. Peace acceptance plus 10 means we only get to 90% war score, right? And then Gallant, I think, is perfect for this guy. There is, um... I, I suppose kind of in the same line as that suggestion, right, in the scholar tree. What if we then went for family hierarchy? Because I feel like that also suits him quite a lot as, as kind of that patriarchal character. Groom to rule to get some extra skill points is already quite a nice, a nice benefit. And then eventually try and get patriarch. I think that's probably the most appropriate for him. I guess so. Oh, this is fun. There's a new tree. I should have had a look through these. We've got spy network. 
as an intrigue tree. Master of the masses. Double the amount of spies that can be recruited without penalty. Instructed spies. Increase the probability that spies find secrets. Little birds. You can hire children older than eight as spies. Convincing. Characters are generally more willing to spy for you. Innocence of a child. Children spying for you have a higher chance of finding secrets. Charismatic. Attractive characters are more willing to spy for you. Omerta. Your spies are much less likely to flip and reveal your name if they get caught. That's interesting. Sleeper cells. Uh, your spies are more likely to join hostile agents, hostile schemes as agents. And then finally, spider. You gain the perk spider, which I assume is massive intrigue. Diplomacy, intrigue, and dread. That sounds awesome. And something I would definitely like to try and do with the future character. If they end up naturally gravitating towards intrigue, I'm going to double down on that because that sounds really cool. I love playing an intrigue character. What can I say? I find it much more interesting to... Uh, I mean, as we did in the um, the Carling playthrough I did in CK3 in the last series, it's much more interesting to me personally to take a round through intrigue than it is through warfare. Hello! Maldrick, how you doing, my friend? Oh, okay, it's not going to cost me money this time. Just a little stress. Should we wait for this to fire? Can set an ultimatum in eight months. Should we just should we just wait for that? Artos Stark, hello. Um, You will be called. Okay, well, I'm going to turn it to Arthur, and then I'm going to change some letters. Um, Ar Arthur. That's uh, it's probably legitimately a name if you go look it up in the books. I guarantee it. She's acting on my behalf. My wife spends a significant amount of time traveling around with her honor guard. Bloody hell, that was fast. Out of the out of the labor bed, straight back to work. I like it. The military presence Lady Catelyn brings with her is a firm reminder of my right to rule. My lady and I stand in defense of the realm or make sure the people grovel. He would never. Yes, of course, we do stand in defense of the realm. Here's the other thing. Oh, for God's sake, Lord Hallis. Yes, thank you. Here's the other thing. People pointed out that once again, as always... The bloody uh, accolades name didn't save. So I've made sure that Lord Roderick is bearer of the Lord's sideburns, as he is expected to be. Nella bought my son John to the market today. John wants to hand out arms to the poor and needs to learn about charity and the ruler's plight to the less fortunate. He refused to give a single coin to anyone. Everyone we met were either undeserving or beneath him. In the end, he kept the gold. He seems to have developed an egotistical streak. Jon Snow has gone completely the opposite. Of how he should have been. I mean, justice is is fair. He's a lazy... He's an arrogant, craven piece of shit. You must care for the poor. You are better than them. Consider your choices carefully, constantly. No. Wouldn't Ned say you must care for the poor? No, he would say you must always consider your choices, John. Consider how you look. Because you're looking pretty terrible. I'm almost glad... Yeah, as sad as it is to say, I'm almost glad that John didn't end up being the heir. Instead, we've got Marin... Horrible haircut. Good God. Pa, Rickard cries, tugging up my sleeve. Uh, I, I, uh, almost as soon as I entered the snowbound courtyard, it's no use. I'm useless. I can't skate. We got this again. 99% chance he gains the ability to skate. Oh, God, this kid's going to end up really good, isn't he? He's going to be some legendary warrior. And I've, I've trucked him all the way down the line of succession. Oh, I feel terrible. What have I done? We can hold court. We've also got people who want to go on adventures. Um... It would be kind of cool to see what artifacts are in the game. 77 gold. Bear in mind that's minimum because she'll write back and be like, Hey, can I, uh, can you, can you help me out here? She is considered a master, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it for her, but not for this guy. I think that's fine. God knows how she would have convinced Ned Stark to do it. But let's see what happens. I, I'm really interested to see what artifacts they might possibly come back with. And here we are. The present revolt that we very much expected. After this, we'll do the tournament that I've been promising. To the miserable Lord Eddard. We have been burdened with your oppressive laws for too long. We are done paying tax. Go on then. The peasants like us to serve their lord. Rally the troops. Okay. That's not that many. That's not that many. There's quite a large chunk to our north there. Let's get the troops building up here instead. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's raise all armies. Immediately head up to Winterfell. Yep, because they are about to mass. Inspiration funded. Here we are then. Okay. Uh, time has come for me to depart, my lord. My beneficiary Lynette bows as well as she can while weighed down by the heavy bags. Before is there? Uh, before I leave, is there anything you wish to uh, to keep an eye peeled for? Obviously, we want to go for something unique. That will give us a unique artifact. Possibly something uh, specifically added to the mod. I'm interested to see what she comes back with. Very interested to see what she comes back with. Okay, 9,000 peasants sieging Winterfell. This is embarrassing. Let's lead the troops personally, because that should be a, a total wipeout. Look at that. Lord Marin, son of wolves, now speaks the old tongue, the tongue of the first man. That's cool. 
Such a cool mechanic. Can we do that with John? I just don't think he'd be interested because he's a shithead. We can try and influence his personality. Um, try and give him honorable. He's got just... Let's try and give him honorable. It would be a nice redemption arc for him because otherwise he is terrible. Sadly, I don't think it works. I approached my son, John, who's playing with a toy that I do not recognize. This isn't the one I bought you, is it? I asked simply, and I met with guilty eyes. No. He trails off, shuffling uncomfortably. I sigh, knowing that he must have taken from a servant's child. John, I start, kneeling down to meet his eyes. You know that you shouldn't have done this. It's natural to want things you shouldn't have, but part of growing up is to do the right thing, being accountable for your actions. No, he yells. It's mine. I took it fair and square. I want it. Okay, we get it, John. Thank you. What a dickhead. He's 11. He's going around stealing toys from children in the castle. Can we... What do, what do we need to influence you? Oh, you have four personality traits. Damn. I didn't realize that was the limit. Otherwise, I would have tried to... Uh, tried to get Lord Marin honorable as well. But I mean, it's a bit more flexible for us to play as him if he's not, though, huh? Ooh. Oh, shit. No, that's not a good thing. Damn it. Our, our Captain of the Violet died. Should call it Captain of the Violent. Hey, war's over. Good work. Boom. There was an exchange hostages button, which we'll, uh, we'll, look, we'll look at in Great Steel when, when there's much more impressive war rather than a peasant revolt. Lynette's knowledge should be enough to keep us safe. A 71% chance she avoids any bears and the inspiration gains to progress. By the old gods, I hope she doesn't have to fight one. Um, slightly higher quality. 39% chance. Should we take the gamble? I think we'll take the gamble. Try and get that high quality artifact. Boom. She slaughters a charging bear. Holy shit. Oh, look at this. In our court, we have someone with an armor inspiration. She is legendary. Oh. <laughs> She'll make some armor. We haven't got armor. You know I've got to do it. Forget the tournament. We're, we're funding. We're, we're funding. I, I mean, I was going to do the tournament. You know, obviously, we get the trade experience. It'd be, it'd be a good. Uh, 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 it's northern tradition to have that big melee, right? But a big part of it was I wanted to, um, you know, I wanted to set them up as, oh, God. Harmer's the person who turned up as a captain. Bollocks. Can I even force her to be? Oh, I can. That's good. That's very, that's very good. I thought I would still have to pay for her to be here. Okay, don't get her killed because she's making me some fancy armor, okay? Quick nap. Oh, that's good. <laughs> What an event. I had a quick nap and felt amazingly refreshed. That felt good. Huh. How bizarre. Inspiration. A change in direction. A traveler coming to be employed under my beneficiary, Lynette, is brought before me carrying a message. Fear not, my great lord, for Lynette is in good health, but I bring you news of a possibility to find even greater adventure. She took a wrong turn somewhere and is now near Sun House. Lynette's traveling companion unfurls a dirty map. She has enough funds to make it to the Crownlands as planned, but suggests that there's some additional funding she can... Ch chase upon a local rumor and bring home a great artifact um the artifact produced by our adventure will be of a higher quality for 60 more gold all right then okay there goes all my tournament money so this better fucking pay off uh it seems in my dealings with the lord rickard i may have accidentally made certain promises of exemptions oh lower tax moron what we'll do then is why don't we invest into winterfell can we upgrade anything? Okay, we got the glass guns. We've got Winterfell itself. Walls and towers we can't upgrade. The Godswood's fully upgraded. Really, I'm looking for somewhere to upgrade for a little cash. We could upgrade um, Winter Town. We could also build some new holdings. Man, look at how much land there is in Winterhold that's undeveloped. Winterwood, Brandfort, Doran Grounds, Colbrand, Walton's Wood. What else do we hold in our personal domain? Like Moat Kalen? We've got Brand's Wood. That has nothing there. So we could build some, like, castle pastures or something, hill farms. Maybe something to bring in a little extra cash. I don't see why not. Maybe we could even upgrade one of these. What about, like, the pitch? We could even throw in, like, a bunch of tournament-related stuff to reduce the cost of future tournaments. Oh, you can you can rebuild Mo Kalen. Oh, that's so cool. God damn. Reduce cost of hosting tournaments in this is down by 25%. That's what Mo Kalen has anyway. Oh, we should turn Mo Kalen then into the tournament one. I've just answered my own question there. Okay. Um, I could be persuaded, sure. So what is it? Like a blacksmith and then the, 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 the different various things here. Hosting a grand tournament is down by 25%. Oh, we could definitely do this. Jeweled contest is down by 50%. 
God damn. Okay. Can't do it right now, of course. Uh, but we will... I guess for the time being, invest in some... In some tax returns. Um, sure, let's go for the hill farms then. Seems good. Well met, Mint Liege. I've heard of your patronage of Malaria the Armorer. She is making a male worthy of a lord. Please take this and give it to her. I wouldn't want to miss the chance to aid her in the creation of a masterpiece. How generous. Oh. No, prithee, keep it. I'll make sure she gets it. Um, we keep the gold. No. Absolutely we'll give her the, the this gold. Crazy. She just wants to pay to help out with making some legendary gear, because then I suppose she can say, oh, I helped out with that. Hello. Um, legendary weapon. We don't really need that. We've already got Valyrian steel. You can't really do much better than that. We've got a medium armorer there too and a competent adventure we could send him on that i suppose if i've got some cash left over where's my legendary artifact then huh i was promised i was promised some very fancy things anyway peacemaker almost a gallant then we'll swap over and see if we can give these kids a few more buffs tywin oh my god what happened to tywin disfigured oh shit he's also refusing to marry i presume he had that before disfigured i wonder how he became disfigured look at him I write to inform you that my house has found itself in war. During such times, one truly sees who is their friend and who wishes to see the fall of my house, signed Lord Tywin. Lord Tywin is asking us for gold. Who's he fighting, anyway? Defending against Lord Roland of Craig Hall and Liberty Wall. Hang on, you're 93% for winning a defensive war, and now you've written to Ned Stark to ask for gold? Why don't you piss off? How much money are you making? Oh, minus 0.3 a month. Well, that's on you then, isn't it? It's no concern of mine. No, it's absolutely not concern of mine to be paying my taxes over to Tywin Lannister. My opulent corp is... Uh, corp? Court is resented and celebrated throughout the world. Today, Thurman is ushered in and introduces a representing a small prior guild from Cutter's Grove in Branswood. Most holy lord, my friends and I hear wondrous mail being made for you and I wish to donate to the armorer. Whoa. Okay. Yes, it would deeply honor us, your majesty. We've saved it for months. No, I refuse. Keep it, my friend. Or is that all? Um, no. It is I who monitored. Thank you for your contribution. How bizarre. Oh, shit. As I lean over the map in my council chamber, I hear a sudden creak. My son, John, appears in the hallway, sauntering into the room, seemingly uninterested in my presence. Then, without warning, I'm enclosed in a tight hug. He quickly lets go with an embarrassed expression. I look at him, a hidden tear in my eye, while my hand is squeezing his shoulder in an effort to reciprocate the gesture. Oh... Oh, no, that's so kind. You're a good son, John. Oh, that's so lovely. Lord Torgan died. Well, that's so terrible. Oh, the beneficiary, Malaria, approaches me. Is there anyone special to you, my lord? She must read my irritation at such personal question from my face because she continues. I mean, is there anyone you wish to dedicate the commissioned artifact to? Do we do it to Lady Catelyn? Um, she really likes him. He likes her, but not a tremendous amount. Only the nameless gods guide me, the old gods, or there is no need for a dedication. Ned's a humble man. There's no need for a dedication. That's what he'd say. The wildlings in the tower. Oh, shit. A wildling party that my men... Uh, a wild and ready party that my men and I have been tracking. There you go. Has taken up refuge in an abandoned watchtower. The tower is barely standing. The walls held together by ages of vines climbing the stone more than the original mortar. Still, the wildlings managed to fortify the entrances and the place few arches on the upper levels. Uh, of course, for the north. Absolutely, we would. We wait until the sun creates a disadvantage for the archers, then we charge in the tower. My men use their shields to block arrows as the makeshift barricade is dismantled. The wildlings meet us on the other side, ready for a fight. For the north. 99% chance that we defeat Hiding Squirrel in combat. Boom. <gasps> oh, okay. It wasn't really... Oh, no. This is Lynette. Oh, Lynette, you prick. She bought us back Northman scale armor. That's really annoying, because I'm paying the armorer to make me armor, you fanny. Ugh. I take the bulky bundle into my hands and loosen the cords, feeling layer after layer inside lies a set of armor. She regales the court with the tale of how she came into possession of this unusual set which she's offering to you. Thanks. You shouldn't have. Oh, well, that's backfired massively, hasn't it? Oh, but never mind. My lord, Melaria waves me over with a gr wide grin, gesturing towards the covered armor stand. I have toyed over the forge for days and nights, but it's finally done. She's not Voshi, which is really interesting. While the chain links do not offer room for decoration, the masterful work on the rivet sets this piece apart from common mail. It's got a helm and mail coif padded with satin. The whole armor has been plated with a thick layer of gold. Masterful, crafted armor. 
And that means the other armor we've got is now going permanently in the bin. <laughs> What's the difference then? Prowess plus 5, 0.8 prestige per month and control territory advantage. It's not even that much better. That's the saddest part. Can we sell this? Auction off artifact for 123 gold. Honestly, I think we should probably just keep it and pass it down to Marin. Right. Gift him as an artifact. Here you go. Here you go. Take this Northman scale armor. Marin is your vassal. He's not, but thank you for letting me know. <laughs> oh! News reached me that my... Oh, my God. It was a, We gave it as a, him as a gift for being knighted. We just did it in the wrong order. He's been knighted. He's made his house start very proud. Oh, shit. That's so cool. And look at that. Captain effectiveness 2%. Heavy cavalry damage is up. Traction opinion is up. Oh, that's so good. And now we've got Darren. Darren, I don't need to change. That's already a name. May you grow strong, Lord Darren. I love that I was... My, my whole justification, right, for legitimizing Jon Snow is, well, you, they might not have any more sons. And then they've proceeded to have three more sons and then a fourth surprise son that came quite literally out of nowhere. <laughs> Amazing. You've also got something called social figure there. This kid is pretty good. 17. More importantly, your son and heir, Marin Stark, can marry. Should we sort by alliance power and see what we've got? Mere Stone of the Iron Throne. That is Robert Baratheon's bastard. She's legitimized? Uh, no, she's not. She is just a bastard of the Iron Throne. Okay, who's he married there? Alisan Mormon. What the fuck? <laughs> what on earth? I mean, to be fair, they're a hell of a combo. Their children will be enormous and very mighty. I like that. That's quite a fun marriage. If I sort by um, prestige gain, we could marry him to... If we marry him back into the dynasty, then no one can debate. Because because everybody knows that Lord Eddard adopted this kid. And this kid became his heir as the oldest son. But people might say, oh, he's not a true Stark because he was adopted into the house. But if we marry him to a Stark, their kids are true Starks. You see, it's very big brain. Are you back into the family? That's a big brain play. They're related. They're not related. Though. We know they're not related. We're not resorting in alliance. It's a, it's a weird play. But it would keep things... It would keep the peace. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's weird. It's a weird one, but let's do it. Karen Stark. <laughs> I forgot she was named that. Ned's a diplomat, okay? He understands how this will look. He understands what the Lords will be whispering about. Oh, there's not real Stark on the throne and all that stuff. Maybe Catelyn one day, or maybe these other kids one day try and, try and stand up to him and, and push him out and things like that. This is just a way to help kind of solidify that and keep the peace because that's all Ned has ever wanted. Oh, and then Big Brain. Hear me out here, right? Big Brain. We can marry Jon Snow off to Mere Stone. Gives us an alliance with King Robert Baratheon. I think Robert Baratheon would love that. So a first marriage to keep the peace, to hold the round down. A second marriage to, you know, to join their houses. That's what that's what Robert Baratheon always wanted. So let's do it. Send proposal. It's actually like massive, big dick play. Big dick energy for him to marry Queen Alice and the She-Bear. Someone as, as almost as massive as he is. <laughs> it's so good. Well, this episode is totally blown out of proportion, and I have no idea how on earth I'm going to edit this down to fit 30 minutes. Uh, so if it's gone on longer than 30 minutes, you know I've definitely failed. Thank you for joining me today. Sorry, I got, got lost in the source. It's just it's just fun to get lost in the Game of Thrones world again. What can I say? Even though I am bitter and will always be bitter, I will die bitter about what happened to that show. But this is this is a nice return, okay? And, you know, maybe we didn't get that tournament. Maybe we didn't. But we've ended up with a good heir and good successor. I think very much Ned Stark version 2.0. A little bit disappointed we didn't get the unique artifacts. So the whole reason we were doing it was to see what we would have ended up with. Which we, of course, got nothing. So it was a bit disappointing. But overall, I'm pretty happy with what we've done today. It's slow going. I got lost in the source. I will try and pick up the pace a little bit, okay? Little, little less in-depth character and a little more playing the video game but i enjoy the slow burn up to something 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 really really impressive even if it takes 
40 or so episodes to get there. I'm going to attempt to thank the patrons right now amid hiccups for supporting the channels, plural, because I'm currently outputting approximately 3.5 videos a day. And it's a lot of stuff. And uh, as always, it would be impossible without the people here. Thank you to Dune, Snathro, Floofy Prawn, Mr. Scratch, Shadow1317, Holy Reapers, Christopher Peck, Matthew Capon, Smexy Grandpa, Mon Mon Rage, Beta Soldier, Space Drake, Essidus, Flex Balls, Dark Desire, Emily, Bradso90, Kende Hajdu, Sweet C, or Kansas, Drusus, Tarsus, Magnus, Optimus, Maximus, Lapis Golem, Slighter, Gogolus, and Dr. Simba. Remember who you are for their support over there as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, a thank you to Icewolf Zero, Daniel Bauman, Tsubasa, Turana, Sondre, Fungu Wussy, Timbo Slice, J520,000, To Snarf, Sitatas Lingua, Derpinate, Punky Roo, Rhino, 3333, Merlin Kane, and Linus L as well. See you all tomorrow.